Grace and peace to each and every one of you. The blessings of Almighty God be upon you as we greet you in the wonderful name of Christ our Lord. Once again, we thank God for giving us this opportunity to allow us to be in the land of the living. The blood is still warm in our veins. For those of us who enjoy it, we are clothed in our right minds and have the proper function in it of our limbs. So thank you God for being kind and merciful. Life is a precious gift, you know. Something that we should never take for granted and something that we should always embrace and seek to find the meaning and purpose of who we are. So once again, we encourage you to share with others the information here and the link, inviting them to join. It doesn't cost you anything. And of course, you can go when you have the time, when it's convenient for you, meaning that you can really sit down and listen and not be divided in your attention because if that's the case, you probably won't benefit as you should. So subscribe and if you haven't, then do that and also click the notification bell that you see. That way you will always be alerted to know when we have new content. So here we go. We are going into the fourth part of our study on this subject matter. What is this thing called faith? Let's give God thanks before we continue. Our Lord, our God and Father, we come to you, O Lord, with praise and thanksgiving, acknowledging you are the Almighty, the Sovereign Ruler, the only true and living God. Father, thank you for giving us your only Son. The good news of the Gospel, Lord, is that we can have forgiveness of our sins. We can have a relationship with you. We can come out from under the power of the evil one. And even though we will struggle in this world because, as Jesus said, in this world, we will have trouble. We have a hope beyond this life that we can rest assured, O oh Lord, we can count on. Father, help us as we declare the gospel message. And people open their hearts to receive with meekness this word. And we realize, Lord, that the things that we see with our eyes are not really the real things. These things will last only for a while. But that the unseen things are the real things. Help us, therefore, as we live in this world of the seen, we will prepare our hearts and minds for the world of the unseen. That faith, Father, saving faith, you being the object of our faith, is what will count to help us to be able to keep in relationship with you, O God, and to do your will and to share others, share with others the message of salvation. The day too will come to know you before it's too late. Father, we thank you. I ask that you cover me, Lord, as I stand in the shadow of the cross to declare your will that souls might be drawn to you before it's too late. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Okay, so we are at the point in that last program, we did highlight four things a person needs to recognize about Jesus in order to be saved. Remember, we are talking about how do we obtain saving faith. And saving faith is a faith that brings salvation. The object of saving faith is always and must be Jesus Christ. But who is Jesus? What's our concept of who Jesus is? And so we said, first of all, we need to recognize that Jesus is fully God. That he possesses all of the attributes of deity. He is the agent of creation. John chapter 1 and verse number 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Verse 14. In between all of that, we read that it is that through him, all things and by him were all things created. The Hebrew writer. In Hebrew chapter 1, verse 1 and following, God who had sundry times and in divers manners, spoke in time past unto the fathers by the mouths of the prophets. 
has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, and by whom also he created the world. The universe would not exist except for Jesus because he is God. He's fully God. He became to us as the Son of God because God put his spirit in a human frame and therefore we had the person of Christ being born who was fully God still. But the second thing we need to recognize is that he's also fully man as well. And so that Jesus is fully flesh and blood but not merely flesh and blood. In that flesh and blood man called Jesus Christ resides all the attributes of deity and therefore he never lost any of his godhood or his godly qualities. That cannot change. And so also we need to recognize that he died for our sins. He never committed sin, but he died for our sins, not for his. Who would die for your sins? Well, first of all, no one could qualify. I wonder who will pay your entire mortgage for you? Oh, somebody would qualify, have all that it takes, but will they pay your mortgage for you? Will they do that for you? Hmm. What if someone had the type of blood that could save your child? But it would mean that person would have to give their life in order to save your child. Will they do that? But Jesus gave his life for us. And he did it because he is fully human and fully God. And he knew full well that he could pay that price and still take it up again, giving us the hope that we need to have. And then fourthly, not only must we recognize that he died for our sins, but we must recognize that Jesus rose from the dead. So you can't have a Christ who is the object of your faith to be saved as simply fully God or fully man, but both fully God and fully man. And then, as a result, what would that God do? He became fully man in order to die for our sins. But he didn't remain in the grave. He rose. So you see how God orchestrated the plan to intervene to provide for us what we couldn't provide for ourselves. This is amazing, you know. That's why faith is, is something deep. It must move from the head and go to the heart. So we must recognize that Christ rose from the dead. In Romans 10 and 9, Paul says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. Why? Because then you will do what God says you must do with that saving faith. Just as the Corinthians heard, they believed, and were baptized. See the passage here doesn't mention baptism. So people jump on it and say, see, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's it. End of story. So that means you don't need to repent. You don't need to get baptized. But what about the passages that mention repent? I tell you, nay, except you repent, you Lord, likewise perish. What about the passages that talks about he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved? What about 1 Peter 3.21? The life of God whereon to even doth baptism now also save us. What about the concept in Romans 6 that we die with our sins and we are buried in Christ by baptism into death as we go down in the water and we are raised up to walk in a brand new life. Our sins are gone. The water didn't take it away. The act of saving faith to do what God says, produce the blessing of forgiveness. So before someone can have saving faith, they must first recognize that Jesus is the Savior of the world, that he died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, that he was buried and he rose from the dead. So we must recognize who Jesus is. Secondly, then, we must receive Jesus. You know, people might recognize him, but they may not receive him. You understand what I'm saying? You could recognize people and not receive them. You could see somebody walking down the road and say, Hey, you know what? Look, that's the minister of so-and-so. You recognize the person. 
But would you receive them? You may not like the person. You may not have any confidence in them. So you could recognize somebody without really honoring them. Really, without really acknowledging them. You see? So it's important that you not just recognize Jesus, but you also receive Jesus. In order for faith to be genuine, there is the second element involved. So the knowledge that one has about Jesus must now be accepted or received as being true. People talk about faith a lot regarding just having the knowledge of who God is. And that's it. And sometimes people say, I give my life over to Christ. Without the knowledge of what they have of who he is, moving from the head and going to the heart. So they never obey from the heart. If you don't obey from the heart, you cannot be saved. That's what Paul says in Romans 6, 17 and 18. Obey from the heart. Peter says, seeing that you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit. See that you love each other with a pure heart fervently. The heart is important. God wants the heart. When the gospel is preached, he's aiming for your heart. But the way to your heart is through your head. And so you have to hear the message. So the most uh, basic meaning of faith involves being convinced that something is true to the point that we are willing to accept it. Acts 2.41 So then, those who had received this word were baptized. What word? Peter preached that Christ is the Son of God, the Messiah, that he came into the world, he took the sin of the world upon him, he died, he was buried, but he rose the third day. So that's what they heard. And when they heard that, they became convicted, pricked in their hearts. And they asked the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter says, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Why did he not tell them, you need to believe, repent and be baptized? Because their belief was already in evidence. The evidence of their belief is that they were pricked in their heart. So they had heard what he was saying. They believed what he was saying. Evidence of that is they were pricked in their heart and asked the question, what shall we now do? Now they were told the very next thing to do is repent. Change your minds and your ways. And be baptized. So you can receive forgiveness of sin and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit as God's mark of assurance of your salvation. So someone may have knowledge concerning Jesus, but not accept it as being true, and therefore never receive him as their personal savior. You can't give God half-hearted commitment and expect that everything will be all right. You know. It doesn't work like that. Several years ago people would say all kinds of stuff now they're refining what they're saying and redefining faith and making it easier as it were for people to become part of a system or a belief system or following they have focused on things that attract people that may not necessarily be spiritual they may be based on physical blessings and there's a health and wealth gospel that has been proclaimed that says, man, if you are in Christ and you are a Christian, you will never get sick. If you are in Christ, you are a Christian, you will be a pauper. You, God wants you to be rich. So you do this and do that and you get rich. People fall for those schemes all the time. They are devil's lie and they take a soul to a devil's hell. If you're not reading the scriptures, you won't be able to discern it. What you will be seeing with your eyes that you believe will be true. Remember, the real things are the unseen ones. And sometimes we see things with these eyes that they are not what they appear to be. Have you ever watched a magician on the stage? The magician on the stage, we're looking at him on the stage. And he will tell us afterwards, that was an illusion. 
You think you actually see the person being cut in two with a saw and sever their body and then next thing you see them, the body hold as though nothing ever happened. But you are watching and so you swear this is what you have seen. But not everything you see with these eyes are really as they appear to be. So, people need to understand that they may have the knowledge of God, but they are unwilling to accept what they are told as truth. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Receive Jesus, as we say in Trinidad, lock, stock, and barrel. What does that mean? You gotta take everything he says. You can't just sift out what you want. If God tells us that you need to hear the gospel, evidenced in Romans 10, 17, you need to believe the gospel message, right? Um, John 8, 24, Hebrews 11 and verse number 6. Yes, you need to believe that gospel. You need to really repent of your sins, change your minds, Luke 13, 3. You need to confess Christ as Lord, Romans 10, 9 and 10. And you must be baptized in Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Now, here it is. Faith is mentioned by itself for salvation. Repentance is mentioned by itself for salvation. Confession is mentioned by itself for salvation. Baptism is mentioned by itself for salvation. And then each of these may be mentioned in pairs or in groups for salvation. So what is right? We don't have to choose because the word of God is true. And you just take everything and put it together. If the end result is this, and four things point to the end result, which one brings the end result? None. By itself. All four together. Because they are what will be required to get to the end result. And so a person who might just say, Oh, I acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yeah, people tell him, you're saved, man. All your sins are washed away. So then what about the people who believe realize that they are lost and they need to be baptized so that they could be in contact with the blood of Christ. Who saved them? It has to be the people who obey what God says. So it's important to understand that saving faith is not only about hearing about Jesus, it is accepting that information as being true. Faith is not believing when there is no evidence. It is believing the evidence that has been given. Let me say that again. Faith is not believing when there is no evidence. It is believing the evidence that has been given. God has provided us with evidence. His son, his suffering, his death, his burial, his resurrection. Faith is not built on ignorance, but rather it is built on knowledge. And there are people today who get up on the platform on the podium and they rally the masses and they work on people's emotions and they are ignorant of the truth of scripture but they are led to believe that they can experience heaven if they just open their hearts and their arms and feel God flowing into their lives you know you, you hear these things but it's not what the scripture teaches Hebrews 11 and verse number 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the ground or the basis upon which we have hope. It is the evidence of things not seen. Example, I always use this one. You walk down the road, you knew there was a supermarket right there, but you wonder where's the market going? But when you look where the supermarket was, all you see is rubble and black ash and burnt wood. Did you see a fire? No. Why then do you believe there was a fire? You didn't see it, did you? No. But there was a fire here. Why? Because there's evidence. If you reject the evidence, then you can't come to a conclusion there was a fire. So too is faith. You must accept the evidence. God gives us the evidence. And when we accept the evidence, we realize that Christ is really the Son of God and that we have to hear what he has to say. Jesus, when he was baptized, 
voice said from heaven, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Another occasion, the voice from heaven said, This is my beloved son, hear ye him. So listen to what Jesus says. The message of salvation relates to his being, who he is, and what he has done in the offering the evidence for that being so. So saving faith must not be or is not based upon merely hearing something. We have to internalize it, accept it as truth because the evidence is something we can trust. And when we see Christ as the object of our faith and we accept Jesus as the object of our faith, we know that we can only be saved through him and in him. So the other point that we would make would be the fact that not only do we need to recognize Jesus, we have to receive him as well. We have to be convicted of who he is, but we must rely on him. And so what we'll do is wrap this up in the next program, showing that we must rely on him. And this is where trust comes in, another element of saving faith. Until then, God bless you and keep you. Don't forget, put a little note in there. Let us know you are there. Tell us how we can help you. And of course, subscribe and click notification. Until next time. God bless you, I am here. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. What the Bible tells me, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. That he died on Calvary, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. That he came to set me free in me. So I might live with him in glory. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. When the Bible tells me I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he died on Calvary, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe That he came to set me free, so I might live with him in glory